While I was in the UK, this was, was this coincidence? I'm not sure if this was coincidence. I get attacked by one of the lean, leading limeys who uh, is now always poking his nose into American politics. That, of course, would be John Oliver. John Oliver went after me personally on the issue of transing the kids. They have been fueled by a lack of basic knowledge about what gender-affirming care actually consists of, summed up by comments like this. If a child walked into a doctor's office and said, Doc, I want you to cut my fingers off, the doc would say, you've got some problems, kid. We need to refer you to a psychiatrist. If the same child walks into that doctor's office and says, Doc, I want you to cut my uterus out, the doctor would say, that doctor would say, oh, well, you're a wonderful, brave uh, person. You're so right. We do need to cut your uterus out as soon as possible. Let's get this young lady over to the operating room. What are you talking about? Absolutely every bit of that is unrealistic from the fact that no one in this country has ever been able to have one conversation with a doctor without first discussing insurance <laughs> to the notion of a young child using the term doc. Why is the fictional child in this bullshit scenario using the same vocabulary as a chaotic rabbit from the 1940s? <laughs> None of this makes any sense. None of this makes any sense there, isn't it? Ha ha ha. So his answer to, to my objection to the the doctors transing the kids, his objection or his, his reaction to that is to make a joke about how we should have socialist health care and to make a joke about Bugs Bunny. And frankly, th those are the strongest arguments he had against what I said. Now, he, he went on and tried to muster something resembling a coherent argument. So what's my position? My position is that health care institutions at the encouragement of the culture and the state, by the way, going all the way up to Joe Biden, all the way up to the federal government, are encouraging little kids to undergo gender transition, which involves bodily mutilations. It involves the injection of chemicals, popping of pills to castrate themselves, often to sterilize themselves, to make them look more like the opposite sex. That's my argument. I'm saying that's bad. And John Oliver said, what you, that's not really happening. To hear some tell it, as soon as a child declares themselves trans, there is an immediate, irreversible surgical decision undertaken, and there just isn't. So let's break down exactly what gender-affirming care consists of, because in younger children, it can mean nothing more than a social transition, like calling them by a new name, or giving them a new haircut, or clothing, or, or providing them with psychological or behavioral supports, because to be very clear, Prepubescent children are not eligible for medical interventions. Now, at the onset of puberty, an adolescent and their family might consider puberty blockers, hormones that delay puberty. There we go. Oh, wait. Oh, you just kind of, there, he just kind of undermined his whole argument. Because he said, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. I, my British accent has not improved while I've been in the UK, so I'll just go back to do my... I'll, I'll, I'll go back to every British accent just being Paul McCartney. John Oliver says, you know, this isn't happening, actually. Yeah, this isn't happening. It's not... No, no children are being transed or anything, okay? No, uh, no prepubescent children are going on puberty blockers until they hit puberty. Then they go on the puberty blockers. Yeah. Talk to John and George and Ringo about that. Obviously, children who are not about to hit puberty don't need to go on the puberty blockers in order to block puberty because they're not going through puberty. But little children who are about to begin puberty are being put on these puberty blockers. And it's not just a fringe case. And it's not just one weird story here or there. This is being pushed nationwide and it's being pushed by the federal government. And it's being pushed by the very confused, mentally ill man, Dr. Richard Levine, who thinks that he's a woman and who is pushing his own sexual hangups on poor little kids. And he's encouraging them to take puberty blockers and to take cross-sex hormones and to have gender mutilation surgeries, all of which fall under the umbrella of gender-affirming care, according to these absolute ghouls and these child abusers and these perverts. That is all happening. And John Oliver is making the argument, as the left always does, this isn't happening and it's good that it is. That's why this isn't happening, and it's really, really good. We're not rigging the election, and it's so good that we rigged the election. If you say we rigged the election, you're an insurrectionist terrorist. Here's a 3,000-word Time magazine article telling you how we rigged the election. 
We're not transing the kid. We, nobody is pushing for abortion on demand without apology, and it's good that we have the right to abortion up until the very moment of birth. Nobody's transing the kids, and kids need this gender-affirming care. Well, this doesn't affect little, this only affects older kids, but we have to put them on puberty blockers. 25-year-olds don't go through puberty, guys. And they claim, the libs claim, that these drugs are reversible. They're totally reversible. They're simply not. Go, you know, go watch Matt's movie. The one thing I missed when I was out of the country that I really wanted to attend, I was supposed to speak at Matt's uh, rally to stop transing the kids. It was a huge success. I was looking at the, the photos and the videos. A huge, huge success. Why? Because the people are obviously on our side of this issue. The reason I bring up John Oliver is, is not even to you know, just kind of get into a urinating contest with this limey who's got a nose for American politics. The, the reason I bring it up is, if you heard my argument, which is, hey, it's kind of bad that children are allowed to go to doctors and encouraged to go to doctors right now and mutilate their bodies. And then you heard his argument, which is, that's, come on, that's not real. What does he sound like? Bugs Bunny Hot? Come on. No, they're just getting gender affirming care. And they're being told that they're actually the boys and little girls. And then they're being put on puberty bloggers. Come on, man. If you just heard those two arguments, which one do you think is the normal argument? Which, which guy there do you think is the crazy radical guy? And which guy do you think is the normal common sense guy? I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I, I think any, unless you are a radical leftist, even if you don't like me personally, even if you don't care about the transgender issue, you hear those two arguments. The argument that we are making is obviously the common sense normal argument that everyone has believed throughout all of human history until five minutes ago. And the radical, crazy fringe argument is the John Oliver argument. And it's not even much of an argument at all. And even, you know, even to John Oliver's point, when he says, and they're not all going on drugs. Some of them are just being told that they're actually the opposite sex. As if that doesn't matter, as if the physical world is all that matters and all that matters is putting chemicals into your body. No, of course not. <laughs> if, a little, if a little kid, if a little boy is told every day starting in kindergarten that he's actually a little girl and there is a, a kind of social currency that goes along with identifying as transgender and it's being pushed by the president of the United States. Don't you think that's either going to deepen his sexual confusion if he has some already or it's just going to plant it there in the first place? Don't you think that the social metaphysical aspect of our lives matters too? I think it does. In many ways, I think it matters a lot more than the physical aspect of our lives. Of course, that, that's child abuse too. And it's so amazing. It's so incredible that the libs on the one hand are, are so belligerently opposed to so-called homosexual conversion therapy, you know, where a, a gay guy shows up to a psychiatrist and says, or a psychologist and says, hey doc, I have the same sex attraction and I don't really want to, and I don't want to live a homosexual lifestyle, so, but I don't know what to do about it. And then the doctor says, well, here are some tools, you know, to kind of try to deal with those desires that you don't want to have. That is, that's the worst thing ever. That has to be banned to people who, the doctors who practice that need to be thrown in prison. That's gay conversion therapy. That's so awful. But the libs are actively encouraging transgender conversion therapy on the other side. Two little kids. The kind of conversion therapy that says, little kid goes up and says, you know, you know, uh, doc, I actually think I'm a girl this week. And then the, this predator doctor says, oh yeah, you are. <laughs> you are a girl. Stop. Don't even call yourself Johnny anymore. You're Sally. And all your teachers are going to have to call you Sally. And pretty soon we're going to get you on those puberty blockers that, by the way, are going to make a ton of money for big pharma. <laughs> and yeah, then we're going to get you into the gender mutilation surgeries. And oh yeah, that, that is both of those therapies are operating on the idea that talking things out and forming one's psychology and spiritual views on this matter of your metaphysical self, of your soul, is going to affect your life and your identity. And John Oliver is saying, oh no, it's not a big deal when it's being done pro-trans. It's the worst thing in the world when it's the gay conversion therapy and it's, it's, it's threatening people's lives and it's going to cause them all to commit suicide. But, oh, when it's with the little kids that you're convincing them they're the opposite sex, oh, it doesn't even matter. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's no big deal. And by the way, it's not happening and it's good that it is. Now, you know, it's Music Monday. I'm so very glad to be here for Music Monday. The producers have chosen a song. I don't know anything about this song or this musician, but I'm going to give you my absolute highest most sophisticated pop cultural analysis 
You know, I'm Wonder Mike and I've come to say hello. I'm, I'm a rap mogul, a hip hop maven. I'm just a culture vulture, baby. The rest of the show is continuing now. You don't want to miss it. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us. 